Harvey Weinstein scandal ignited the public debate about the sexual abuse of women, but will all the talk result in real change? We are the gatekeepers. Spread your legs, open up. You could be famous. You know we're holding the dreams that you're chasing. Jesse Reyes' haunting song details the pervasive casting couch culture in the entertainment industry, a sad pattern experienced by Hollywood A-listers who say it's happened to too many women. I just need to know that we come together in the end that we take care of each other in the end, and that these experiences actually, that, that we think divide us, actually will bring us closer. What I've come to understand is that though we are unique and powerful as individuals, we are invincible when we come together. The many allegations against Harvey Weinstein are just that, unproven accusations, and they underscore a more widespread problem, says civil rights attorney Eric Sanders. There's no system in place to really protect people to ensure that they're not taken advantage of, and that means both sides. It just can't be a conversation among women, says Andrea Rachel Parker, who plays Destiny on the hit star series Power. The conversation needs to start with men taking responsibility of their actions and then also becoming advocates for women's safety. She believes mistreatment of women extends far beyond the entertainment industry. Sexual harassment isn't a race thing. It's not about class. It's not about race. It's not about one specific work industry. It's an issue all over for everyone. All the attention being paid to the accusations against a supremely powerful Hollywood figure does have a positive aspect, says Dr. Ali. English. I think now it has given the power back to women. They're able to have this conversation. People believe them. They understand them and they're now learning to have empathy for their experiences. It's good to talk about it. It's good that everybody's talking about it. I'm, I'm thrilled. Uh, legal actions need to be put in, in place to protect people on film sets. Many believe breaking the silence is a step in the right direction. Let's take it to our panel and find out what they have to say. Joining me is Somia Krishnamurthy. She's a pop culture expert and music journalist. Somia, great to have you. Great to be here. Also with us is Eric Sanders. He's a criminal defense attorney. He's a civil rights and discrimination expert. And he's also the founder of the Sanders firm, PC. Eric, great to have you on. Great to have you, Peter. Also with us is, you've seen her in many films and television shows and all over the media, Andrea Rachel Parker. She's an actress, choreographer, and singer. You see her in HBO's The Deuce and Star's Power. Great to have you on this show. Thank you for having me. Somi, I want to start with you on this. In terms of how widespread is this? How widespread is it? Is this something that pretty much every woman goes through at some point? I think it's very widespread. So we're talking about it now in the context of Hollywood and entertainment, especially with what's been going on with producer Harvey Weinstein and the fallout. But you've seen a lot of high profile cases, whether it be in hip hop, the tech industry, news media, going all the way to the White House. So I think this is a much larger conversation that goes far beyond entertainment about how we treat women, the objectification of women, and how women kind of traverse in male dominated industries. So do you think it's a, a side effect of the fact that women still don't have equality in a lot of ways? I think that is definitely a part of it. Um, and then also just sort of culturally this idea of boys will be boys or quote locker room talk. A lot of generations, especially previously, that was really something that was acceptable and women kind of had to learn to deal with it. So button up your shirt, don't smile too long, don't stay too late, don't drink too much. And really the onus was and is still on women in a lot of cases. Eric, when you look at the Harvey Weinstein, I mean, it's just like one revelation after another you know, many of these by A-list Hollywood actresses. Mm -hmm. What's your whole take on his, his situation? Because there was one woman in New York who said even as recently as a couple years ago, she tried, she wore a wire for the NYPD to try to catch him admitting on tape what to what he allegedly did to her, and yet no charges. What, how do you explain that? Well, you know, I've seen problems like this even before I retired from the police department, before I became attorney, obviously, um, and I used to investigate sex crimes. This is a complex area of the law, whether it's on the criminal side or the civil side. With respect to Weinstein, I don't know enough about him yet to even comment other than say the allegations. I mean, as a lawyer, that's what I have to say. Um, I don't know enough about it. But as, an, as a former investigator, you look mm -hmm. into these crimes. Are there certain similarities? Are there certain patterns? It's, you know, the women a lot of times feel like they're isolated. They feel like they need this person for a job. Well, and that's true now. With respect to people who are victimized, and sometimes you have males that are victimized, although it hasn't really come up in a conversation too much. It does happen as well. Um, you have people that have 
unequal power, whether it's in a workplace or you're trying to get a job as an independent contractor or you're trying to get an apartment, it's the same kind of problem. You have unequal power. And where you have unequal power, you have this problem. So yes. But in, in, in terms of the, the legality of it, like people are saying, well, where if a guy touches a woman without asking her permission, is that automatically a crime and, it, and can they, that be considered sexual abuse? In technical sense, yes, it could be a crime. But the question is, will a person complain about it or they don't complain about it? Most things that we interact with human beings, it never rises to the occasion of a crime because people don't complain to the police. Most times people take care of these problems themselves. But it could be sex abuse, could be sexual misconduct, um, could be, you know, some sort of criminal charge related to that. And on the civil side, it could be sexual harassment, you know, it could be assault and battery. It all depends on what, what you want to do. A, a definitely a level of severity. Oh, yes. Like, like a, scale, a scale of that. Everything is context. Andrea, what about for you as an as an actress going out to these casting calls in the industry? Do other you know do your colleagues talk about hey, watch out for that guy? He's just make sure you know watch out. He's a little too handsy. Do you hear things like that? I mean, as a woman, I think you hear things like that often, not just with being in Hollywood, um, not just with being in the entertainment business. It's kind of how we're reared. We have to always keep something about our sexual ident identity in, in our head, um, in our mind, as we're walking the streets, as we're taking cabs, as we're um, going out to school or lunch with friends. This is just a constant thought. As for me personally, I haven't fortunately dealt with anything like this when being a part of my audition processes, I wish every actress could say the same thing, but it's not the reality. And so um, the conversation, it, I think we're just now s touching upon it, and it needs to get a lot wider. And I think a lot of it has to do with what Samaya said, that we need to now start interjecting men into the conversation and making them hold each other accountable for what they do and what they see each other do. And do, how you, think. Do, you, do you feel like the because you're very close to the hip-hop community also do you feel like the climate and, and I don't want to single out hip-hop because it's not just hip-hop but it's, it's just that's you know that, that's a predominant culture right now the do you feel that there's the, the misogyny kind of makes it okay for you know the way women are talked about their bodies are talked about the way their look is talked about the way that you know she does this or she won't do this and and even it, some of the lyrics do you think that plays a role in creating a climate of disrespect for women I feel that women right now are in a day and age where they're feeling a lot more liberated and they're owning their body and they're owning their mind and they're owning what they wear and how and how they speak and how they handle situations and I think because we are in that sense of being liberated um, we're controlling the climate that hip hop is is kind of playing around in and I think that a lot of hip hop is about being egotistical right. and a lot of it is about being for the culture and right. for the struggle and for for kind of the fun of certain things but I don't necessarily think that everything is serious and I think that men and women as a whole have the ability to kind of decide what is serious and what isn't. You feel like you're the only one. You don't feel like you can have such an impact on actually bringing this person, you know, to their knees in a sense. In terms of the law, because right. I, I want to take advantage of your legal expertise mm -hmm. and also being a former NYPD officer mm -hmm. who investigated these type of sex crimes. You're on the subway. This has happened to pretty much I, I don't want to say every woman in New York City, but a lot of women, you're on the train, and right before the train pulls into the station, you feel a guy grabbing you, but the train is so crowded and the doors are about to open, and you you kind of know in your heart, like, yeah, that guy was just trying to cop a feel, but the, the other part of you is like, I really don't want to deal with this right now, let me just right. get off the train. Is that a crime? Technically, yes. You have sex abuse. You have the harmful offensive touching of another. The question is... If you charge a felony, will it, the felony stick or become a misdemeanor or would it get pled down because a person, their background, how many times they've been arrested, all those things are factor into it. What kind of evidence do you have? As you see in the subways, if you haven't noticed in the paper, there are more and more people getting caught masturbating in the subway as well. Right, the and sex women offenders, yeah, I see like all this. That. Right. So there's more arrests being made on, on the subway. The problem is what happens with it once you make the arrest. And on the civil side, of course, you could sue them for the same assault, battery, you know, those kind of offenses as well. So, I mean, what does it say to you about, like, with the Harvey Weinstein case, that this guy, I mean, he's just, like, opening the door with his bathrobe with nothing on underneath. 
and just yeah that was a crazy visual thank you for that um you know I, I think when it comes to Harvey Weinstein this was one of the most powerful men in Hollywood give us an idea just because for people who don't know how big he was give us an idea of like how influential he was very influential with his company Miramax and then later the Weinstein company he was very instrumental in producing some of the biggest movies Pulp Fiction Shakespeare in Love um, Goodwill Hunting and he was really known as making and breaking careers you know there were sort of this kind of notion of these um, Harvey girls or the Weinstein girls where he would be kind of a mentor to these young actresses. His wife, who owns the um, brand Marquesa, would oftentimes outfit them for the red carpet, and they would go from obscurity to A-list nearly overnight. So he really was a kingmaker in Hollywood. So to see him fall after decades and decades of these allegations is very powerful, but What's interesting is you have people like Angelina Jolie, Gwyneth Paltrow speaking out, very much A-listers. But a lot of these incidents happened decades ago, and some of these women continue to work with him even after some of the allegations. So it's kind of a very tricky situation. So I think there was a lot, going back to what you said about even women being sometimes critics, um, there were people critical, like, wait a minute, so you said this happened to you, but then you won an Oscar with him. So what's that? duality so there was a lot of suspicion you know people call it the worst kept secret in Hollywood um, that Harvey was going through these alleged behaviors but if that's the case there was also complicity from both men and women right because people benefited from it financially. absolutely Andrea I, what do you think I tend to disagree with something like that as far as like the women being as complicit in it because you're talking about women who were very young and a lot of times when you're that young you don't know how to handle mentally a situation you don't know how to conceptualize what actually just occurred a lot of times you also don't know how to start a conversation like that because again falling back to what you said about how men are raised and how women are raised we're not taught how to handle these types of conflicts and confrontations and a lot of times when you're uncomfortable in a situation you kind of shut down and so the only way you feel able to move forward is kind of pretending that something that did occur didn't occur or maybe didn't affect you as much as it had or maybe you felt like you were the only one and we go back to isolation and silence and therefore if you feel like you're the only one you don't feel like you can have such an impact on actually bringing this person, you know, to their knees in a sense. In terms of the line, the we've seen so many cases where false charges have been brought against men and that has kind of cast a lot of shade on women and also especially on women who really did have something happen to them, a crime committed against them, and are afraid to come up. What about what about that and come out about it? What about that? I mean, even recently there were accusations against the rapper Nelly about what happened after a concert. Um, and, you know, the most recent news is that the accuser does not want to go to trial. And her explanation through her lawyer was she's like, look, I'm just a regular girl. No one's going to believe me compared to Nelly. But in the court of public opinion, some would say the damage is done. I mean, again, we don't know about from the legal perspective. But if you look on social media, if you look at just the media in general, a lot of people have already um, critiqued him and now kind of branded him. And I think there's there's two sides to every coin where it's very important to sort of be understanding of victims. And they're absolutely allowed to not go through legal proceedings, to change their mind. It's his or her choice. Um, but sometimes when that happens, I think that's when it's very easy for ske um, skepticism to creep in. And um, Eric, the, it, Wendy, Wendy Williams got into a little bit of trouble uh -huh. over the Nelly incident because she <laughs> said people, women should know not to go into somebody's tour bus at 2 o'clock in the morning. Now, this girl was 16, saw me, or I think she was... Or like a college uh, like student. Six, she, or she, she young, yeah. Young. I don't know if she was underage, but I, I want to talk about the underage thing. But what about that sentiment, like, she should, not, she should know if you're going into a tour bus at 2 o'clock in the morning after a concert, something's going to happen? <sighs> 
that's just a, to now this whole societal thing of uh, you know whether people are comfortable to criticize or evaluate other people's conduct. I mean, look, we do other things to avoid crimes. We don't walk in the parks after dark. I mean, there's a million different things we do. There's things you can do to make yourself safer, safer. And I think that's what she was trying to get at. And of course. Some women got upset about that. Which think, wasn't oh, to blame the vi- right. not blaming but the victim, not, but that's what I thought too. She was just basically saying like certain common sense things because, and especially you know, you're, it's a very exciting atmosphere. You're flattered that this famous yes. rapper is asking you to, you know, to to come with him or or whatever. But common sense. But this is nothing new. I mean, it happened to Mike Tyson. I mean, right. he actually wound up going to jail for this. I mean, right. the same kind of thing. The, is, the woman was 18 years old. Early I believe. in the morning, it's two or three o'clock in the come morning. Come to the hotel the, room. The point is, business doesn't. It's not conducted in a hotel room. I mean, at it's three kinda, o'clock in the morning, it, it kind of doesn't make any sense. But you know, you have to look at the whole picture. I mean, and false allegations happen. Look at Rolling Stone, learn that one. I right. mean, they wrote a whole article, expose is a big story, big story. It was false allegations, and the same thing happened at Duke University. I mean, so we have to be careful. You have to really carefully analyze these things and don't make assumptions based upon limited information. Because That's these sexual, bias. go ahead, Andrea. Yeah, I just don't like when the conversation turns into what a woman should not be able to do whether she was young whether it was after dark whether it was a tour bus or a hotel you know people are humans like you said first and foremost so people want to have fun people want to find new adventures and experiences and if this isn't a person that's a public figure that you look up to and you have an uh, especially when you're young and you have a possibility of saying hi to them or giving them a hug sometimes your mind being young doesn't allow you to rationalize it in the sense of hey it's after dark and this is his tour bus so anything's bound to happen again with going back to hip hop and the culture you know I don't want it to be the fallback I think as a as adults people need to take responsibility for their actions so if something did tra- like happen and transpire on that tour bus or anywhere with him and another individual or for any artist at that at that fact like, I would just hope that it's not placed on the victim or the person who feels like they're a victim to to have been more responsible or careful because in something like that I think the issue has to do with bodily respect and it has to do with understanding the responsibility of sexual intimacy and 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 getting consent and and rationalizing you know is this person of legal age at all but do you think talking about risk factors is taking away from women i mean we say you know wear a seatbelt in a car don't drive 90 miles an hour on a winding road when it's raining or it's icy you know it's it's like you're you're more likely to have a crash than if it's definitely daytime and dry and 45 miles an hour right so definitely wear a seatbelt in the car but if you're not wearing a seatbelt and a drunk driver hits you, it's still a seatbelt wouldn't necessarily save your life, right? Right. And so what I'm trying to say is that it's not taking the conversation away. It's definitely some, something to consider and to, to be brought up and mentioned. I just don't like when it's always used as the fallback in these types of conversations. Right. Andrea, I want to give you the final final word on this. Where, where would you like to see things go so that we women don't have to feel every time we're out that we're kind of like subject to predators? I just want us to keep going on this path of accepting our bodies and, and being liberated and feeling as though we have the right to assert what we expect from other people as we're meeting them. A lot of times we were closed mouth upon meeting people or needing someone or feeling as though we we want to start a project or a new connection and we don't say, hey, look, these are my standards, these are my expectations. We kind of lower them and we keep lowering them every time we meet a new person. And so for me, as the conversation gets broader, as we continue to have it, I want women to feel confident in saying you know like you you're gonna have to treat me a certain way you're going to have to be this person around me because this is the environment that I'm in and this is how I see it and this is how I cultivate it and this is what I want and if you don't want that that's absolutely fine but then you can't be in this environment with me you can't share this this safe space that I have implemented for myself all right, that's awesome. Thank you all very much for this uh, wonderful episode of Street Soldiers. Very important topic. Somia Krishnamurthy, Eric Sanders, and Andrea Rachel Parker, thank you so much for being with thank us. You. I'm Lisa Evers. Remember, use your mind, it's your best weapon. I hope it's your only weapon. Let's push for peace.